one of the more popular templates on the web is called Bootstrap. It's a CSS framework that has just many, many different iterations and versions and uh, has a lot of customization and is super popular. So there's a lot of things out there you can do with it. I'm a fan of the start, getting it from the Start Bootstrap website. There's a website called Start Bootstrap that has all kinds of different templates and things of that nature, but you can just Google free Bootstrap templates to find a set of really cohesive web designs out there. Let, let me show you what I'm talking about here. I'm gonna download one of these kits and show you how easy these are to modify. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download this kit and I'm going to put it in its own folder on the desktop and save it. All right, let me go ahead and show that on the finder here. And I'm gonna unzip this. This creates its own folder. Inside this folder, we have got a few things. We've got assets, we've got a CSS subfolder, JavaScript subfolder with all kinds of JavaScript tie-ins, which we haven't really gotten into yet, which is kind of important for this stuff later on, and the index.html. I'm gonna go ahead and open this index right out of the gate. This is what we get. This is a pre-made, website template that has all the pictures in it. It's got everything already set up. If you look inside the folders that are in here, the IMG subfolder, the assets, there is a whole set of, of pictures, logos, the team pictures that are in here, the portfolio pictures that are in here. These are all preset. This is pretty interesting. Now, why is this useful? For one, there's a lot of things we can do very quickly and easily. Let's say we like the look of this template and we just wanted to use this, this existing layout as a mock-up. Well, this is pretty simple to do. I can find these pictures that are in this template. Here's the beauty of using a template. I'm gonna find this bootstrap folder, go into the assets, the images, right? We've got all kinds of different stuff. The header background, let's take this header background into Photoshop, open it up and modify it. And this is, again, how, how easy this is to change these templates. So that is going to, when I open up this into Photoshop and I save back over the top, you can open up any of the images that are on the in, in these templates, these icon files, you can do these, these portfolio image sites or images, it doesn't matter. Any image that you've got, remember, is hammered into the code already. There's a, there's a path to this that exists currently. So what I can do, and I'm just gonna do something really simple here. I'm just gonna change the tonal value of this and re-upload it. Let me go in and I'm gonna put, just say a, a green shift over the top of everything, just so I can see that there's a differential here. I'm gonna change my blending mode to something a little more obvious here so I can see that something has happened. Maybe a linear, maybe a color dodge. Okay, nice tint on this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do file save as, or file just like we did before export save for web legacy to compress it properly i'm going to save this jpeg right over the top of the other jpeg so inside start bootstrap assets okay and i'm going to look for header bg jpg and as long as it has the same name i'm going to hit save and it's going to ask me to overwrite it i'm going to hit yes replace now if i go back into my browser and i refresh look what happened Okay, it's everything, the code is all the same. All I've done is reskin this image. This is a lot like game design mods. You can take any picture you want and not only just retint it, I mean, you can obviously add other things right on top of it. If I took uh, an image out of, out of another folder and, and placed the image right over the top of here, I mean, literally anything I do here, say if I create a black bar in the middle and save it. There we go, like this and save this image over the top of the other. Again, make sure you do the save for web legacy. Anytime you do this, just do file, export, save for web legacy. Just to get that good compression on it and save over the top of the original. Again, you go to your, your wherever this thing is saved and find that original and save it and overwrite it. Anytime you overwrite, doesn't matter if you put a new in image in there, it doesn't matter what you do to it. It will, see, there we go, boom, it is created that black bar across the top, which is a kind of a nice highlight on top of my nav bar. Now notice it's actually kind of interesting because the nav bar itself has a, a little little drop down, which is why I did that, a little piece of code that happens when you roll down. So now it's got a nice kind of a visual tie in in the background. You could reskin all this if you wanted to. Now there are further modifications we can make to this. Say for instance, I want to change the colors that are in this website. Say I like this template, but this yellow color isn't doing it for me. 
I want green to match the rest of my template. Easy to modify this stuff. Bootstrap modifications, all you've got to do is right click or control click on Mac, whatever you want to modify and go to inspect on your browser. What this does is opens up this inspection code window. Now I'm going to go ahead and change this to responsive size so we can see things a little bit better. But what it's doing here is telling me the classes, okay? This is this this has the the class that I've highlighted here. Okay, I've rolled over this and I've got this highlighted. What you can do is you can go to the right hand side over here in this inspect window. I've got this button highlighted. I can see that it's highlighted. And I can see the class says button, button primary, right? So I, I, I've got an idea this is the correct thing. href is to services, which is the services page. If you go over here and look for the color value, in the right hand side, if I scroll through all of the CSS styles, and this shows you all the styles that are applied to this specific class set, I can find the specific class .btn primary that has the colors of here, the, the, the background color and the border color. Now, if I change these in the browser, this is just a prototype change. I can change this to maybe a green that I'm looking for. Say this is the green that I want. I'm going to copy this color. But this, this at least tells me if I've changed this and it modifies the stuff on screen, it tells me that I've targeted the correct class. Now, this obviously hasn't changed this in my website. This is just changing it as a prototype in the browser. To make this change permanent, I've got to go back in and find .btn-primary, that class. Okay, now this is going to be interesting. What we can do is go into this folder. Okay, this is the, this is the, the bootstrap folder. I'm going to go into the CSS subfolder and open this styles.css. And I'm going to search for, do a, a control F or command F to search down in the bottom here, dot btn dash primary. Look at that. By searching for the class, I found the class through the inspect in the browser, dot btn dash primary. Then by going back to my CSS sheet, now this is the kind of the crazy thing with Bootstrap. Look how far down this went. Line 3032. There are thousands of lines of pre-built code. This code is already programmed. It's already pre-built into this template, and I can change it however I want. I copied and pasted that color. I can paste the, my new color right over to the top of the old color. Okay, I've just pasted that in there. And now here's the, here's the wonderful thing. If I close this out and I refresh, this button is now green. Now, it is anywhere this button gets used in the website. Now, it only gets used once, but any time, and it may be 20, 30 times, anytime it's referenced throughout my, my, my sheet, it changes. So you can do that with anything, with any piece of code here. I could search up any piece here and I can right click it. I can inspect it. I can find the direct class that that's associated with, section dash heading, right? And I can either target it in my external style sheet over here, or I can go directly into the index file here and target that as well. So that, that's the wonderful thing. You've still got access to all the front end stuff, even though it's a little more complicated in here, Bootstrap is. You still have access to all these CSS styles, and that's how you go through and modify. You target something using the inspect in the browser. You find the correct chunk of HTML or CSS. You either go into the internal style sheet or the external style sheet to find it. And you can swap in pieces and parts and pictures and text however you like. All of this stuff is accessible from the index. If you open up the index file, you can go in and you can change all the different things that you want. You can literally just swap content out from a design that you've built into a new template. That's the beauty of Bootstrap and more complicated CSS templates.